So the first thing you do with a polarization multiplexing system, even if you don't really think about it, is you decide upon your polarization basis. And typically, that would just be horizontally and vertically polarized light. But you, know, you could choose any polarization basis that you want, as long as they're orthogonal, you know, as long as they're both on opposite sides of the Poincare sphere. But you know, it's just easier to use linearly polarized light, uh, so you do. And particularly considering that the polarization state's not going to be maintained through the fiber anyway, using some other sort of state is kind of a bit pointless. So it's not really wrong, but it's just a bit odd. With MDM, you've got sort of a similar decision to make. Uh, typically, people, particularly when they're working with phase masks, have used the LP modes. And that's because the LP modes are you know, real-only functions. You can generate them using really simple phase masks, binary phase, low resolution. You don't need a lot of beam con uh, phase control on your beam converter. But you know, they're degenerate. They're going to mix in the fiber anyway. So you, know, you can choose any basis uh, your heart desires. So you know, for instance, here we have three modes which are degenerate, integrated index multimode fiber, uh, and the phase masks. I'm going to point out. We've got the phase masks that generate them up here. So you could, for instance, launch into the Hermite Gaussian basis. Uh, you know, it's an orthogonal set, so you know it's not a problem from that point of view. But not all modes are created equal, like at least in terms of their loss. So you sort of come into your phase mask with this Gaussian sort of round beam. It's inefficient to convert that to this sort of long rectangular Hermite Gaussian. You know, there's not a lot of overlap between the intensity that you have and the intensity that you want. And if you want to think of it in the Fourier plane, if you look at the autocorrelations for the different modes, you can see the Hermite Gaussian, for instance, it's got a lot of little side lobes here. It's kind of long in this direction. And it's not going to couple well into a single mode fiber. By contrast, if you've got this mode here, which is in the OAM basis, I'm going to call it the OAM basis because um, it contains the OAM modes. And you construct that basis just by adding together the two degenerate forms of the same LP mode with a 90 degree phase shift. So like in the same way that you would construct circularly polarized light by adding together the horizontal and vertical. But you can see that beam's intensity, circularly symmetric, autocorrelation circularly symmetric. It's going to go better into a single mode fiber. It's going to be more efficient to generate the mode that way. I've calculated masks uh, for my system for both the LP and the OAM basis. And you can see there's about a 2 dB improvement in the loss. Uh, and that 2 dB improvement is not like a universal value. That will depend on exactly what your system parameters are. So obviously, if you had a system where you had a mask that had 1 dB loss, you ain't going to be getting 2 dB improvement out of it. But the point is that the OAM basis is always more efficient than the LP basis. This is the system itself that I'm going to be using for transmission, uh, transmitter, receiver. Channel 1 is launched uh, on the fundamental mode of the fiber, just using lenses. It's going to be routed through to the appropriate output fiber at the receiver. The second channel is launched using a spatial light modulator. So that's a programmable choice of higher order mode. The propagation of the higher order modes is more complicated because of all the degeneracies. So say, for instance, you launch in an OAM of spin 3. It's degenerate with the LP12s and LP31s. And they're all going to mix together along the propagation of the fiber. And then at the receiver, you'll get some random superposition of those modes. And then typically, you'd use electrical MIMO to demux that and recover your channels. But this system works differently. It works uh, optically. And what happens is the beam comes in like this, gets split into two orthogonal polarizations. Then both those polarizations then get lined up with the polarization required of the liquid crystals in the spatial light modulator. Each uh, polarization reflects off its own phase mask before they pass back and uh, get recombined through the polarizing optics here and focused onto an output fiber array out that side. And that's what it looks like in the lab. Beam comes in, split into two polarizations, reflects off the phase masks on the SLM, recombined, focused onto the output fiber array. All right, so we've got our example here. This is 
uh, some particular channel coming at us at the receiver as some random superposition of some modes. In this case, it's a superposition of uh, four basis modes. And we want to get that mode back into a single mode fiber, which is over in the Fourier plane here. And we've got a phase mask in between programmed on our uh, spatial light modulator that's going to help us do that. So the SLM shows masks for each of the four basis modes one at a time and measures the coupling into a single mode fiber. And now it knows the amplitudes of each of the basis modes. And then it interferes those masks together, so it adds them together with different phases, uh, superimposes them, interferes them, uh, until it works out the difference. And then you get a sort of little autocorrelation peak there when all the answer is correct and it goes back into a single mode fiber. In the lab, it plays out like this on your SLM. It plays back slower than um, it really does, just for animation purposes. So it quickly did, 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 does it measures the power for each of the basis modes. Now it's interfering them together. Power on the parameter fluctuates, works out the phases, gives you all the complex coefficients up here, does the other polarization. And then when it's all done, uh, you get the final routing mask for your system. So those routing masks are designed to form the correlation peaks for the different uh, channels at different spatial positions in the Fourier plane, corresponding to the different uh, fibers in your output fiber array. And because almost everything about the system is defined by the LCOS itself, and because you can reprogram the LCOS, you can do a lot of things with this system just in software. So obviously you can add and remove channels, you can switch which modes go to which output fibers, you can change the superpositions, you can adjust the attenuations of the different channels to compensate for mode-dependent loss. You can broadcast one channel to multiple output fibers. You can tap off power to modally, you know, in a modally dependent way. Uh, so you can do a lot of different things. Do the miracle of LCOS. For instance, here's an example where I've launched in a fixed mode at the transmitter through a two-kilometer length of graded index multi-mode fiber, and I've just left it to continually decompose that beam uh, overnight. And you see the sort of complex coefficients for the four basis modes in the two polarizations jittering about randomly, like you might expect. This is playing back faster than real time. And these are the amplitudes and phase that have been reconstructed based on the measured coefficients. So if you've got SLMs at the transmitter and the receiver, you can use that to uh, measure the full modal transfer matrix of the fiber, which describes you know, all the modal couplings between the modes and the polarizations in a complex way, you know, with amplitudes and phases. So we've got two and eight kilometer lengths of 50 micron core multi-mode fiber here. These are the modes you're launching in at the transmitter, and these are the modes that you're uh, receiving at the receiver when you decompose the beam. I've grouped the modes in terms of their degeneracies on the y-axis just to make it easier to read. So all these modes that share a single entry on this y-axis here all have the same propagation constant. Um, and you can see that the two kilometer length actually looks worse than the eight kilometer length. And I suspect that's because the mode coupling in the system is still being dominated by the mode mux and demux itself. Uh, now this is like a really multi-moded fiber. So it's got about 100 modes, including polarization. Um, so you know, it's like most sort of MDM experiments are going to happen up in this little square here. This goes all the way out to you know, OAM spin eight. And when you start getting out to OAM spin eight and um, those kind of really higher order modes, so the system becomes you know, quite sensitive to alignment and aberrations and all that kind of stuff. So they get a bit tricky. And you know, it's dynamic as I've already, already shown. So you can track that modal transfer matrix with time as well. Here's one over some weekend. Uh, this is in the LP basis um, over a different two kilometer length of fiber. But you know, the principles are all the same. And then finally, we can do some actual transmission experiments. Here we've done 256 gig QPSK signals over two and eight kilometer lengths of fiber without any electrical MIMO, it's just all optical DMUX. And we've done uh, two sets of experiments. We've got one where we've launched the fundamental mode and the OAM spin one, and one where we've done the fundamental and OAM spin two. The fundamental and OAM spin one are separated by about 11 dB of isolation. And the OAM spin, uh, the o, uh, fundamental and OAM spin two are separated by about 14 dB. And that value doesn't differ too much between the two and eight for the reasons I already uh, discussed. Um, so you pay a little bit of penalty because of that isolation, but um, 
because this is just an optical DMUX, it can't compensate for things like DGD. It can't compensate for, uh, it's only got, basically it's only got one value of amplitude phase polarization that has to suffice over the entire band. So if that starts to vary too much, it starts to walk off too much during the band of the signal, uh, it can't compensate for that either. Uh, that's it.